last night two Amazon and Samsung.com deliveries arrived on the same day. The Samsung 960 Evo M.2 NVMe SSD. One terabyte in size. You can see one of them in the back left there. Now as we look around, you're seeing a 950 Pro installed in my Xeon D system on a $20 or so vertically mounted PCI slot. Now that'll give me full speed, also gives me better visibility for the camera so you can kind of see what's going on much better all in one framed shot. And you'll see 76 degrees here, that's aiming at the controller portion of this SSD. Now why do I have a piece of tape sticking out over here? Let me demonstrate. If I remove it, you'll see the words show up, but because of parallax effects, they don't line up. So my FLIR camera is too close to the system, I'm better off covering one of its two lenses to just show you a purple area rather than the actual sticker label here. Now, this video is going to highlight a little more than just a routine unboxing of an SSD. It's going to show what it looks like, first of all, when the SSD boots up and heats up. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, cloning. It'll take about 20 seconds of abusing that NVMe SSD with uh, a lot of reads and writes uh, deploying from a, a clone copy. So let me just get started with that. So first, fire up the machine. And I don't want you to miss anything on camera, so I'm going to do that with IPMI. So here I have an interface from the App Store here, IPMI device, and uh, exposure's a little blown out, but you'll get the idea. Power up. Okay, system's powering up. Now it's been off for about an hour. You can immediately see the NVMe controller. Whoa! That was a mistake. Sorry about that. Um, you can immediately see the NVMe controller starting to heat up. I'm going to aim that a little more centrally there. And you can see we're at 110 Fahrenheit already. And we haven't even booted uh, ESXi off the USB key to eventually see a VMFS file system that is on that Samsung 950 Pro. Anyhow, you get the idea. I've got the crosshairs of the FLIR thermal camera that's doing infrared imaging of the SSD right on the hotspot. So, while that's warming up and ESXi is booting up, uh, it takes a couple minutes, three minutes, then it'll be ready to do some cloning, which takes another three, four minutes because VCSA appliance needs to fire up. Okay, so I mentioned I have two 960 EVOs nearby. While we wait for that thing to boot up, how would I do the unboxing where you can see a little better in this wide angle shot? So here is the box. And let me go back into autofocus mode here. In the back of the box, PC codes and so forth. Bottom of the box confirms the drive that I have. On, focus, there we go. And the front of the box. Now this shipped in a lightly padded envelope, so they can get a little bit crushed during shipping, but does it really matter? Um, so it's time to open this up, and we have a seal right there. Okay, now this is looking awfully similar to the 950 Pro I unboxed about 15 months ago now, something like that. We have a manual, a little sticker holding the manual closed, and the NVMe is already kind of popped out in transit. There's really not much holding it in that little area there. It's pretty much kind of free floating. I don't feel it clipping or popping or anything really, but. Anyhow, we're going to get my fingerprints on it, although it seems to be resisting fingerprints pretty well. Let's have a really close look at this thing. This is the first one I've seen. So the reviewers got their units in October, um, and I just bought mine outright and didn't receive it, like I said, until December 22nd. Today's the 23rd. Alright. Now, copper. 
There's a copper layer in the sticker that's supposed to spread the heat out. That's why I'm recording this video. I want to actually see that in action. There we go, you can see the copper. So on the back we've got a heat spreader. So we're probably not really going to see the heat spreading in action on the back. And what do you know, the sticker is going to be in reverse. So man, you can see that. All right. Now, machine's been booted for a bit. We've got an activity LED. The blue one's been blocked by a little bit of light tape that helps uh, from the ridiculously bright blue glare. But anyhow, uh, I need to adjust the exposure and focus so that you can see the FLIR camera saying 144 Fahrenheit. All right. Now remember, I've got IPMI going here. How about another thing called Ops1E? Hmm, how am I going to show you that? Does that work? No. Zoom out. That'll work. Okay. Okay, Ops1E was just installed in this. It was blocking me from doing the good stuff. Like uh, VM management. There it is. So VMware management is now enabled. And now it's going to log right in. So sorry for that little side trip. Nice. All right. So now we can do some cloning. So point to a VM. All right. What do we got here? Do I have a template? Uh, it's not showing. Does it matter? Not really. Let me just take any old VM. And let's see where it lives. Now these are some tests I did before. Let's see what data store this VM is currently on. It's powered off. It's a Windows 10 test. And it's living on the 950 Pro right in front of your eyeballs. Okay. So how about I uh, clone that? It's going to take about, ooh. Uh, all right, this is one of those errors that I can fix on a PC, logging into VTSA and restarting the uh, service. I've seen this before. I actually have an article about this long-standing known bug. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have VCSA all set up, and I've got a virtual machine. And here's one that's called Win 10 Test 950 to 950. Let me just show you that we know it's powered on. It says it at the top. And we can look at a uh, links, data store, and it's using the 950 Pro. That's right in front of you. So this is a pretty good one to clone, right? So clone. Here we go. Actions. Clone. Uh, not the greatest name on earth, but here we go. Uh, what do we got on the right? We've got 149 degrees. Let me get the focus set there. I don't want you to miss anything. And here we go. Temperature is going to climb. And you see the activity light going crazy there. Let's see if I get status anywhere shown here. 39%. Activity light continues to go a little nuts. Looks like I'm slightly off the mark as far as temperature reading there. So if I aim it down a little bit, does it get any higher? A little bit, 175. Let go, 170. So I'm losing a little bit of temperature there. Just from a slightly poor aim. So it finished. So now you know how long it takes and how much it heats up. So that's a practical demonstration of what cloning with this particular SSD looks like. Okay, and shut the system down. And then, like I said, uh, just a matter of screw mounting this in that same spot and putting the one that's there, the 950 Pro, laying down on the motherboard behind that PCI card. 
That way I can V-motion everything over and then start this camera back up. So I'll be back in a little bit with the 960 Evo installed. Here you'll see we're on ESXi 6.5, and this is the host client, the HTML5 user interface. And if we look at storage, well, we're not going to see the data store yet because we haven't formatted it yet. So if we go to devices, it should show up. And there it is. Very first time I'm seeing a Samsung 960 Pro. So we can say new data store. Now it's best to be consistent. I'm going to call it simply 960, and then I'm going to name it like it's friends. Now notice you want to double check this menu. VMFS 6 is what you get by default now, and that's what I want. It warns me it's about to race everything. And pretty much instant. So that means I can head back to the other camera, and now we can start doing stuff with it, like the motion over to it. If we look at all the storage, you'll see that I can now easily fix my really crummy name and be a little more consistent. Okay, I'm going to bring up the web client and click on the data stores in my OneNote or currently OneNote cluster. Open it up and now should be able to rename that easily with a simple right-click rename, because VCSA is managing it, right? Makes sense. So, uh, looks like that was my convention. So I'm showing 1541, the ZND 1541 is a machine it's physically in. So when you're not using shared data stores, it can be useful to know which host you physically installed it in. So there you go. Uh, ready to head back to the other view. Now that we have a data store, ready for a VM. 128 Fahrenheit seems to be our steady state temperature. And if we have a look here at the data stores, yes, there it is, the 960, ready to receive a VM. So, time to copy VM. So we did the 950 to 950 test earlier. How about I just migrate that? change the data store over to the 960 as the target and that's it. Now it didn't let me rename it but that's okay. We see the word migrating, the lights flickering and we're going from one NVMe to another. Let's see what the temperature is doing. Alright so we're at one 60 or so, only slightly off center. Let me see if I can get that perfect. There, bullseye right in the middle. So it is running cooler. I won't say the pattern is much different than the 950 Pro was. That copper is something that's effective for the back of the M.2 is what I'm thinking. But either way, we're a good 10 degrees cooler and I also hear the thermal throttling overall is less of an issue with this drive. I think it takes longer before it'll kick into any kind of thermal throttling mode. So, uh, okay, back here, it looks like it finished. So thanks for watching my quick overview of the 960 EVO unboxing and thermal testing. And thanks for visiting tinkerdry.com.